What we have so far is useful for a lot of cases, but it's targeted at sites that are read-only by most users. What many businesses need are advanced web applications where users log in to see or do something specific to their own needs. And often these are different than what the built-in Django admin provides. In order to do that, we'll need to provide a way for users to log in and then see additional options than what they had available before they were logged in. Django has phenomenally powerful and yet easy to use user management facilities. For the app we'll be creating during this video series, we're going to avoid reinventing the wheel and we'll just use the built-in Django admin area to create new users. If we go to view an existing user, you'll use these checkboxes. One lets you deactivate a user without actually deleting them. Our app won't make use of that. However, these next two are important. Staff status gives a user access to the admin area. In the case of our app, we're going to have three permission tiers. There are anonymous users, those who view the site read-only, contributors, users who can add or edit their own blats, and administrators, users who can access the admin area and add new users. They can manage any content in the system, not just their own. Let's create a new user that will be a contributor. I'll call my test user Lester Tester. Use whatever you like. When I enter the user and password, I'm going to hit Save and Continue Editing. Watch what happens with this form. Notice that after saving the new user, I now have a lot of editable information. I'll enter a name and email address, all made up in this case. I'm not going to check staff or super user status. If we look here at the groups, you'll see that I can add a new group and assign Lester to one. Our application isn't going to need this, but it does make using Django's built-in permission system easier. Looking at the next box, we'll see that we have various permissions. Again, we're not going to use this, but I want you to see that you have the ability to control it. You can assign permissions from this, for example, the ability to add a blat to the user. If I go to manage the groups, I can create a group and assign the permission there instead, which is very handy in case my application needs role-based authentication. In the third video of this section, I'll give you some pointers on the tools Django gives you to ease this. Now let's log out and see what happens if we log in as our test user. Even though I enter the correct username and password, it says I can't log in. This is because I don't have staff status. We can't use the built-in admin interface to authenticate these users. However, Django does provide some helper functions to make creating our authentication system pretty easy. I know you're surprised, right? Hopefully you're seeing a trend here of Django providing a rich and mature set of components that make building complex and rich applications as close to effortless as I can imagine. What we're going to use is similar to the generic views from the last section. In our urls.py, we need to import this module from django.contrib.auth. Because the name views is ambiguous, let's import it as auth views. Then we need a route like this. We just have to use the built-in view authviews.login, and we'll give it a name of login. While we're here, let's go ahead and make one for logout. Note that our URLs are at slash login and slash logout. Django defaults to something longer, so we need to edit settings.py and set two values, login URL and logout URL, to match these two paths. Now we'll go over to our master.html template so that we can add links to the login and logout. The beautiful thing is that we automatically have access to the user variables and our templates using the user variable. However, we can't just check to see if the variable exists to see if the user is logged in. The reason is that variable exists no matter what. It's either a real user indicating the user is logged in, or it's an anonymous user object, meaning that the user is unknown. What we need to do is check the users.is underscore authenticated property to see if the user is authenticated. If so, we'll just prove that we know the user and then we'll also add a link to logout. I'm going to add a URL parameter here called next and point it to the home page. This is where we want Django to send the user after they succeed in logging in. Now we'll also add the login link if the user isn't logged in. Again, I'll add the next parameter. Save our files and then let's check the browser. If we reload, we'll see the user is not logged in and has a link to do so. If we click that link, we get an error saying that there is no template found. It's expecting a template called registration forward slash login.html. This is configurable, but that name works for me. Back in our code editor, let's create a folder in our templates directory called registration and inside a template called login.html. This template will look like most of our templates. We'll extend the master template and then we'll make a block for content. Inside, we need an HTML form tag and we can use the URL function to get a reference to the login view. We need a hidden input that returns the result of the next variable, which our view magically passes on through. We'll also need a submit button. We're also going to need form fields for username and password, but we're not going to create those form fields. Django has a form library that creates an HTML form for any model. I'll explain that more in the fourth video of this section, but for now, the important thing to note is that we will use the form variable. Django, for historical reasons, will display forms and tables. I prefer not to do that, so I'm going to use the asP method to get a set of p tags instead of table rows. Save and reload your browser. You'll see the form, and it's just as beautiful as the rest of the site. 
And by beautiful, I mean that it's in desperate need of styling. That's okay. Let's try to log in as our test user and submit. Oh, looky here, we have an error. Django has an annoying but good habit of being secure by default. In order to use much of the form functionality, you'll need to also make use of Django's built-in CSRF protection. This prevents sneaky websites from tricking people into logging in without them knowing. In order to make this work, we have to go back to our code editor and add a tag inside the form somewhere. It's just CSRF token. If you add that and then refresh the page, you can now log in successfully. Notice that we get bounced back to the home page. Look at our navigation. Now it says that we're logged in and it offers to let us log out. Go ahead and test that and voila, we're no longer logged in. Are you amazed at how little code we actually had to write? Now you know how to check if the site's visitor is logged in and you know how to show logged in users something different than anonymous users. In the next video, we'll take this a step further and associate user information with Blatt's.